Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, we will discuss the thyristor triggering circuits, particularly the resistance triggering. Now, before we begin the resistance triggering discussion, let us understand the need for a triggering circuit. A thyristor, as we know, is a controlled turn-on device. This means that an SCR will continue to be in the forward blocking state even when a positive anode to cathode voltage is applied across it. SCR is to be given with a gate voltage to trigger it and moves its operating point from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode. This gate voltage is usually fed from external circuits called as triggering circuits. When designing a thyristor, special attention needs to be paid to these triggering circuits because the operation of the thyristor is largely dependent upon the way in which it is triggered. In fact, a triggering circuit is one of the key areas of SCR circuit design. They ensure that the SCR triggers when required and does not trigger falsely. So, coming to some of the important SCR triggering circuits, they are resistance triggering, resistance capacitance triggering, ramp and pedestal triggering, digital triggering and finally UJT triggering. In this session, we will discuss the resistance triggering circuit. The circuit shown here is an experimental setup in which instead of using a gate pulse to trigger an SCR, the gate current is supplied by an AC source voltage Vs through R1, R2 and the series diode D. The elements of the circuit can be defined as R1 is the gate current limiting resistance, R2 is used to vary the gate current and hence the firing angle, R limits the voltage at gate terminal and finally diode D prevents buildup of negative voltage at gate terminal. Coming to the operation of the circuit, in the positive half cycle of the input supply, the SCR goes to forward blocking mode. However, it will not conduct until its gate voltage exceeds some value given by VGT called as the gate threshold voltage across the SCR. In the same period, the positive input voltage forward biases the diode D, the SCR's gate cathode junction. This causes flow of gate current across the gate terminal and let the gate current be named IG. This current increases as the supply voltage increases towards its peak value. When the gate voltage VG across the resistor R reaches the gate threshold voltage VGT, the SCR turns on and load voltage VL will approximately equal the supply voltage Vs. Now the load voltage is represented here as V0 which is equal to VL. The SCR remains on and the load voltage equals the supply voltage until the supply voltage decreases to the point where the load current is below the SCR holding current. This usually occurs very close to the point until the supply voltage becomes zero and begins to go negative. The SCR now turns off and remains in off state while supply voltage Vs goes negative since its anode to cathode is reverse biased and since the SCR now an open switch, the load voltage is zero during this period. The purpose of diode D in the gate circuit is to prevent the gate to cathode reverse bias from exceeding the peak reverse gate current during the negative half cycle of the input supply. The diode is chosen to have peak reverse voltage rating greater than the input voltage maximum Vm. The same sequence is repeated when the supply voltage Vs again goes positive. Now, the controlling comes from the variable resistor R2 here, which varies the resistance in the gate circuit. 
If R2 is increased, the gate voltage will reach its trigger value IGT at a greater value of supply voltage Vs, making the SCR to trigger at a later point in the positive half cycle of the input supply. Thus, the triggering angle alpha will increase. The opposite will occur if R2 is decreased. If R2 is made large enough, the SCR gate voltage will never reach VGT and the SCR will remain in the off state. When R2 becomes zero, the SCR will trigger at the smallest value of alpha possible. When R2 is set to an optimum value such that the gate peak voltage equals the gate triggering voltage, we see that the SCR is triggered at alpha equals to 90 degree. This is because for R circuits, voltage and current are exactly in phase with each other and therefore the peak value of the gate voltage reaches the threshold value at alpha equals to 90 degree only. Now let us look at the waveforms here. Here you can see we have three different set of waveforms. The first one is for alpha greater than 90, sorry, the, this is when the gate threshold voltage is greater than the gate peak voltage. The second set is when the gate peak voltage equals the gate threshold voltage and this occurs when alpha is equals to 90 degree and the last set of waveforms is when the gate peak voltage is greater than the gate threshold voltage. Now let us analyze each one of them individually. Now let me start with the first set of waveforms here in which case we have the gate peak voltage lesser than the gate threshold voltage. Now this occurs when the value of R is very large. Now coming back to the circuit, when the value of R2 is very large, the time taken by the resistor R to build a voltage across the gate terminal of the SCR will also be large. Therefore, the gate voltage will reach the gate peak voltage at a very small value. That is, if you look at this, the gate peak voltage is not at all sufficient to reach the value of gate threshold voltage. So in such a case, the thyristor will never trigger and it will simply follow the input voltage and the load as load voltage as well as the load current will be zero. This means the thyristor is not triggered at all. This occurs when the value of R2 is very large. Now coming to the third set, I'll come to the second set a little later. Coming to the third set, when the value of R is very small. Let me come back to the circuit once again. When the value of R2 is very small, the resistor builds up the voltage at a faster pace. Therefore, the gate peak voltage will reach the gate threshold voltage that is required to trigger the thyristor and the thyristor will trigger for a smaller value of alpha. This is what is depicted here. If you can look at this, let me just zoom in. Right. So, since the value of R is very small, the gate peak voltage VGP will reach the gate threshold voltage which is exactly here at a very small value of alpha and therefore the load voltage will appear across the load and this will follow that of the input in an ideal scenario. You can also see the waveforms for the load current here and coming lastly to the thyristor waveforms as long as the thyristor is open the voltage across the thyristor is equal to that of the supply and the moment it is closed at value of VGP becoming equal to VGT or at simply alpha, the thyristor becomes a closed switch. So the voltage drop across the closed thyristor is equivalent to the ohmic drop across the same which is about 0.5 to 1.5 volts. Now since this is a R triggering circuit, in the positive half cycle of the input supply, the thyristor has an option to trigger and in the negative half cycle of the input supply, since the terminals anode to cathode of the thyristor will always be negative, the thyristor will never trigger. So when you are looking at the negative half cycles of all of the waveform sets, you can see here the thyristor voltage equals the supply voltage and the load is load voltage is never seen for the negative half cycles. Now coming to the last set of waveforms here, 
which is when the value of R2 is set in such a way that Vgp equals Vgt exactly at alpha is equals to 90 degree, the thyristor will trigger at alpha equals to 90 and you will obtain an output voltage for the load across the across the load at alpha equals to 90 uh, and from 90 till pi the load voltage will follow the supply voltage and at the same instant the thyristor voltage becomes zero in an ideal scenario and otherwise it will be the ohmic drop across the thyristor. So this is how a R triggering circuit will work. One of the interesting points one you must uh, you must note for this type of triggering circuit is that the maximum value of alpha that can be attained is only 90 degree. So this is particularly because since we only have an R triggering circuit or an R across the gate terminal of the thyristor, the current and voltage are always in phase and the VGP, the gate peak voltage will reach the VGT, the gate threshold voltage when the input is at its maximum and the input is at its maximum as we know at alpha or sorry at omega t is equals to 90. So this is why you will obtain the maximum value of alpha at 90 degree only. Now coming to the design aspects the limiting resistor R1 is placed between the anode and gate so that the peak gate current of the thyristor given by IgM is not exceeded. In the worst case, that is when the supply voltage has reached its peak value Vm, R1 has to be greater than or equals to Vm divided by IgM. Coming to the next one, the stabilizing resistor R which is connected across the gate should have such a value that the maximum voltage drop across the device does not exceed the maximum possible gate voltage which is VGM. So the value of R for such a condition should be less than or equal to R1 plus R2 multiplied by the gate maximum voltage whole divided by the input maximum minus the gate maximum. The thyristor will trigger when the instantaneous anode voltage Vs is equal to IgT which is the gate threshold current multiplied by R1 plus R2 this is nothing but VgT plus Vd plus the gate threshold voltage itself. Now coming lastly to the advantages and disadvantages of the R triggering circuit. R triggering is one of the most simplest and most economical circuits but that the advantages of the circuit ends just there. The disadvantages of this circuit are first and foremost the triggering value alpha is greatly dependent on the thyristor's gate triggering current which as we know can vary widely even among SCRs of a given type and is also highly temperature dependent. In addition, the trigger angle alpha can be varied only up to a maximum value of 90 degree with this circuit. This is because the supply voltage is maximum at its 90 degree point and the gate current has to reach IGT, the gate threshold current, somewhere between 0 to 90 degree if it will, if at all. This limitation means that the load voltage waveform can only be varied from alpha equals to 0 degree to alpha equals to 90 degree. So that is about the resistance triggering of the thyristor. Thank you.